Welcome back to Educator.com. Today we're going to continue with our lecturing on the bacterial cell wall. We've already talked about gram-positive bacteria, gram-negative bacteria. In today's lecture, we're going to talk about the bacteria that don't really fit under either of those two categories. So in terms of classifying bacteria by the cell wall, um, you can see that, of course, we have the gram-positive bacteria, the gram-negative bacteria, and then we have these bacteria that don't fit under either definition. And those are the ones uh, we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about acid-fast bacteria in relationship to tuberculosis. We're going to talk about the intracellular bacteria in relationship to chlamydia. And then we're going to talk about the bacteria that don't have any walls at all, and those are the mycoplasma. Now, just to remind you of how the gram-positive and gram-negative uh, distinguish themselves, and in fact, this is a terrific um, uh, algorithm, uh, paradigm, to really think about these bacteria in relationship to the cell wall. So the first criteria is positivity, negativity, or no gram stain at all. The second criteria is shape. So are they coxy or rods or spirals? And in, in both cases, that's the next level in which you organize these bacteria. And then you have to really organize them according to at least the coxy in gram-positive bacteria. Are they staph? Are they strep? Are they enterococcus? And in terms of the rods or the bacilli, remember that was the other name for them, are they non-spore forming or do they form spores? Now in gram-negative, we have the spirals, the rods, and the coxy, and the spirals, uh, leptospirosa, trypanoma, and borrelia, uh, excuse my pronunciation. The rods, we uh, have the straight rods or the curves, and the curves are their comma shapes. Uh, Vibrio, Helicobacter, and Campylobacter. And then we have other variations um, in terms of whether or not they're zoonoses. And those are bacteria that are carried by other animals, respiratory bacteria, gastrointestinal bacteria. And if it's a straight rod, are they aerobic, anaerobic, or facultative? So this is a nice way to kind of categorize everything and and keep track of how they're uh, organized but you know we had many other criteria that we classified these bacteria and it's important to really consider all of them but as far as the traditional methods that are used today it's usually done uh, using these criteria 